Hi everybody, um, it's uh, Big Bird 130 here. Uh, look, uh, I'm just wanting to uh, share with you a new purchase of mine, which is a Bulmer AG um, or Bulmer AG um, long reach pole chainsaw um, SMX120. I bought it off eBay um, from edisons.com.au. I'll put a link in the description uh, for their website. Um, you can purchase it from them directly, or you can go to their uh, big uh, their uh, eBay store, and they sometimes they're cheaper on eBay than they are direct from their store. Not sure how that works, but it, sometimes that's the case. So anyway, you can see I've already cut the the uh, um, packing tape, so uh, I can open it easily. So let's go ahead with the unboxing of this saw. In the box up here. So you see the packing is, is fairly good. Um, looks like everything's been kept in its place. Let's put this box to one side for that. We'll open it up in a minute. So we've got some foam. Uh, we seem to be holding everything in place. And some cardboard as well. Looks like it's all fairly sturdily packed. Um, I should point out that it only took me, I ordered it on the weekend. It's Wednesday now. Uh, I'm in Melbourne and it's from Sydney. Uh, and it only took um, you know, really three business days to get to me, so it was fairly quick. They shipped it. They shipped it on the Monday, um, and it came fairly quickly. So what we see here, we have looks like packed in here um, three extension poles uh, to extend the saw. They look fairly sturdy. Um, they're reasonably heavy though. Uh, they're anodized aluminium. Um, but I can see they do suggest um, in uh, in some of the, the descriptions that they have online that you use an assistant if you've got all the poles or all the poles attached um, because it can be quite heavy to hold up. So I can see that's the case. Uh, next is the power head. This is, I think, 65 horsepower. No, uh, 65 horsepower. <laughs> 65 uh, cc's, which is 5 cc's more powerful than my uh, Husqvarna chainsaw, or my biggest Husqvarna chainsaw. Uh, so I expect it to be quite powerful. Now it looks like it's well packed. Um, Got a better trigger on it than that was in the pictures. Um, yeah, but it looks looks fairly good. There's a bit of uh, assembly there. There's no handle on it at the moment, so it needs a handle put on it. So I'm assuming that's in that box. Uh, we'll just put that to one side for the moment. And here, lastly, is the actual saw attachment. That goes on the pole. So you can see here it's got your automatic oil fill uh, feeder um, reservoir there and a cover that goes over the chain and holds it all in place. Uh, so yeah, uh, it looks pretty good, um, fairly solid. Again, there's a bit of weight in it, so I can imagine that it could be quite heavy um, with all of the attachments in place. So you might need two people to lift the saw up. Um, that's interesting. Uh, the uh, drive shaft was sticking out. I wonder if that's anything to the O by. But it all looks good. So next stop will be uh, assembling this item. Uh, so I'll get rid of the boxes and um, we'll have a look at assembling it. One thing I forgot to uh, go through when I was doing the unboxing was a, of course the little box that I took out before. So let's have a look at that. I'll just open it up. We've got a the tool kit and some hardware by the looks of it. Um, so a very cheap little spanner, uh, a socket set for uh, for doing up the uh, the nuts and so forth, an Allen key, a, uh, a, a screwdriver and a few other things like that. So uh, yeah, a little bit there. A mixing bottle for mixing your fuel. I won't need to use this. I actually mix my fuel. It takes 25 to 1. I mix my fuel at 25 to 1 
for all of my two-stroke tools. So um, I probably won't be needing this bottle. It's a bit small anyway. I mean, you only it's only uh, 600 mil, and the fuel tank takes more than 600 mil. So ear protection, cheap ear protection. Um, uh, I've got some, so I probably don't need that. <coughs> I'll keep them as spares. Um, some goggles, again cheap goggles. Uh, they look reasonably uncomfortable, so I probably won't use those either. Good goggles or good glass, safety glasses. Um, the handle, the fit. Some sock protectors or gaiters or whatever you want to call those. Um, I've got a pair of those that I use, so I use for my wife or someone like that maybe. Some very cheap gloves, very thin uh, cheap gloves. So they can keep them as spares maybe, um, but they're, you know, I don't think they'd last very long. Um, using them for any normal sort of situation. Chain guard. The uh, bar. Now this is a 12 inch bar I believe and um, has a sprocket end. Uh, it's greasable which is good. Uh, so yeah, so the bar. A, just a strap to go over your shoulder to hold the machine. chain. Um, I'll see how good the chain is but um, it'll probably suit for what I need to do. I'm not doing anything terribly heavy enough. Well, that's it for that box. And this is the instruction guide uh, and looks like you have to go to a website for the instructions. All it does is warn you about the fact that it needs 24, 25 to 1 uh, fuel um, but you know the instruction site the instructions are online so I don't know we'll see how we go without the instructions I think anyway uh, that's the rest of the boxes unboxed uh, so we'll go ahead and assemble it so it appears the first thing we have to do is actually fix this handle you see it's loose here so it needs tightening up it's actually it's screwed on it's just not not tight so we'll do that first So it appears that I'll have a bit of a fiddle with that because I don't think I've got it quite straight. Um, I might just move it a little bit first. Um, so we'll leave it at that for the moment. So the next job is to uh, fit the uh, handle. Um, so this piece is on the bottom, this is on the top. Uh, there's a piece of rubber here uh, to fit it to which just takes some of the vibration out of the, out of the unit into the hand. Uh, so we'll fit that now. We have some fittings over there, um, so let's just have a look. I believe I need to start off with.
I'm probably going to leave it loose a little bit for the moment uh, so we can work out where exactly it's comfortable for us. So, yeah, I'm uh, thinking it might be about there. Yeah. A bit hard to say without the other components connected. So, um, we'll just see. In fact, it'd probably be easier if I measured it against one of my other tools which I've already adjusted a handle for. So, I'll leave that there for the moment. It's just a, an Allen key to tighten those down. Uh, so next we'll have a look at the, uh, the saw. So what I have noticed, um, just pre preparing for the next uh, shot for this video, is that um, this tool that they supply you is virtually useless. Probably only good for pulling the spark plug out because it doesn't fit the nut on the chain bar or for the chain bar. And the Phillips head end of it is no good for adjusting the chain. It's a flat screw or a, just a flat screwdriver. So, you know, this is almost worthless to us. Anyway, they supply it. Um, what does fit is the little cheap spanner that they supply. That, uh, that's a 10 mil nut that's on the top of this here. And they supply a little screwdriver with a flat and a, and a Phillips on it. Um, so that, of course, will work for adjusting the uh, chain in and out. Anyway, let's uh, get on and uh, put this chain on. First of all, we have to remove the nut. Take this cover off. Let's see here that uh, it has a sprocket, as you'd expect. An adjuster screw here for adjusting the chain in and out. You see that's fairly loose, it doesn't fix in as such. I don't know whether it's supposed to. Uh, looks like it's supposed to be fixed in there so it doesn't move in and out. Um, in fact, it could be a manufacturing error. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. When we put the chain on, we'll check that. Um, if so, then I'll have to send that component back. Let's uh, let's put the chain on and see what happens. Here's the chain. Let's hope it's not too tangled. Nope, it's perfect. So we've got the chain. the bar. The bar has oil points and uh, a spot for adjusting the uh, adjusting the bar. The bar fits on perfectly so that's good. We'll just move this along a bit. Let's put the chain on. So let's see, this is the bottom of the saw. So the chain needs to bite in that direction. Then you put the cover back on. bolt wherever I put it. I shouldn't really be doing this without gloves on. It's got pretty tight for some reason. Is it on the spool on the right? Yeah. It's on the sprocket, which is good. So yeah, so anyway, that's attached. I put the bar on upside down, but there you go. 
It doesn't really matter as long as it gets flipped every now and then. Okay, so there we go. Right, so I've put, put it together. And, uh, as you can see, um, it's heavy, I would say. Um, and this is just with the pole, the standard extension. There's not the other three extension poles on it, which would make it substantially heavier. Um, but, you know, it looks like it, it fits up okay. Um, there are some bits that maybe could be better in quality, but, you know, I paid $179 for this on eBay, and I wasn't expecting, you know, Husqvarna-style engineering or still-style engineering in, in one of these. And for the amount of time I'm going to use it, um, I don't think it'll be too bad. It's not like I'm going to be, you know, out every weekend cutting trees or cutting branches out of trees um, and pruning branches. So um, it was probably cheaper than going and hiring one for a couple of days. So, uh, and I have it here permanently. Anyway, um, that's it for today. It's a bit late now, so I don't think I'm going to get out and actually cut anything. Um, uh, but tomorrow I'm hoping to, to get out and cut something, so I'll film something for you then. Uh, and we'll see how we go. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please uh, click the like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Um, as I said, I'll put the link to Edison's in the description. And, um, and we can go from there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.